uh, I'm going to talk about sugar. And uh, yeah, just a word about me if you haven't seen me before. I'm a developer, I'm a DevOps guy, I'm a training speaker, co organizing events back in my home country, which is Latvia. Yes, and I'm, of course, I'm a Groovy developer and do a lot of Groovy, a lot of scripting. And of course, of course in, 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 in case of, uh, in, in the area of automation, in the area of DevOps, I do a lot of you know, Groovy scripting as well. Okay, let's start and uh, let's let's uh, first of all let let me show you let, let me tell you what what is my background and why why I created sugar in the first place and uh, what was the the pain point and they all started I would say uh, 2009 2010 uh, where I worked uh, in a big project which was built by my my aunt Maven and eventually Gradle and teams were mostly composed of Java developers who have complex architectures. Most, in most of the cases, actually over-engineered ones. Many environments, dev test, QA, seed, UA, well, yeah, a lot of them. Um, but some of them, I don't even know what they mean, but yeah, there were there many of them. Uh, and uh, we had to support infrastructure as well, because uh, the operations guys were kind of slow at that point, and we had to support our uh, configuration and installation of the software ourselves, uh, and we, of course we wanted to automate that, because, we, and because of the over-engineering solutions, we had a lot of you know, things to support, despite of the fact that we didn't need that, but we, because we were forced into that. So a lot of environments, a lot of servers, a lot of things to support that we, uh, we needed. And of course, it, uh, we, we didn't really want to spend days, hours, and weeks to do it configured manually, because, I mean, who wants that? Uh, and uh, operations guys were not really available at that time, or they were, but you know, it will, they were shielded by the ticketing system. You had to provide a lot of information on the issue before you can actually get the issue solved. It was always easier to support it ourselves. Also, we had to support our own infrastructure for building uh, ver ver version control, uh, the quality control, like Sonar Cube and all that stuff. Uh, we needed to support it ourselves because there was no it's impossible, it's impossible to get, to, to actually rely on operations guy at that point. Uh, and of course we wanted to reuse the experience we already had in the team, so most of us were Java developers, Groovy developers, and we wanted to make the, the, the best out of that. And the first thing we did, of course, we used something that already existed at that point, so Ant and Gradle integrates very well, and uh, we used uh, things that have been there for uh, remote connectivity and remote file copying uh, on the CP task and on the SSH exec task. It still exists, I mean, it's still usable. Uh, the only problem is that uh, when, you, when you run uh, a single command, you have to specify a lower, huge amount of parameters and you have to specify every time. And every time you run something, you have to do it, uh, you have to actually create a new SSH connection. That's uh, well, for, for small scripts, it's fine. For small tasks, it's fine. But when you have a lot of them, when you actually rely on that uh, quite a lot, then it's not, not, it's not okay. So, uh, therefore, we created Sugar. Uh, and Sugar, as you may guess, that's the Groovy-based DSL for making uh, SSH uh, work with SSH connectivity uh, more or less e easy and nice and declarative, more so to say. So, it is used for remote command execution, for file uploading and downloading. Another thing it's used for also is for tunneling. We, we, that was really you know, a useful feature at that point for going through, uh, breaking through enterprise file worlds, especially in production. So at the moment, sugar is the, the latest sugar version is 0.9.25. Uh, I'm working on the next version, but yeah, it's going a bit slow, I have to say. Uh, so let me show you some sugar use cases that I know people are using sugar for, and that I'm using sugar myself for. Uh, of course, it's simple, you know, the task execution against the remote server. When you have a sugar script, you just you know do installation of, of the components. You do some uh, file copying back and forth, and that's 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 the basic use case that that the, the main use case that sugar is designed for. Uh, also. Uh, you can kind of integrate Sugar with the uh, provisioning tools that are uh, currently existing. So, for example, uh, I, I often use it to, you know, to glue, uh, uh, to do like a, uh, automated deployment of provisioning code of uh, like uh, Ansible scripts or Puppet scripts into the final server, and I write uh, Sugar code to actually do the the, the uh, copying of the, of the code, like with with with, uh, with all, 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 all the provisioning code as, as a zip, and then run a specific command like chef solo or ansible local or uh, puppet apply to get the server provisioned. Uh, because obviously, uh, when you start uh, writing a lot of you know, uh, configuration code that configures your uh, final server, then using uh, scripting tools like sugar may not always be, will become quite verbose eventually. So using 
existing provisioning tools actually helps there. And that's what I use it for quite often as well now for, for various clients. Uh, another thing that uh, I use Sugar for uh, is uh, uh, to write uh, specifications for, for, the, for to test the infrastructure. Uh, and uh, I will show an example in, 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 during the demos. Uh, basically, the idea is that we execute a set of tests against our, our infrastructure, against our servers, verifying that this component is installed, this user exists, this package is there, this cron job is scheduled. And then we get back the results in the form of tab format. Uh, tab is like test anything protocol. It's a very simple protocol of describing how many tests have passed, how many tests have failed. And you can feed that tab a result, uh, which is basically a text file, into tools like Jenkins and see a nice report of what is going on with my machines. And I can kind of make it uh, as part of, a, of, of my delivery pipelines to verify that the environments, the, the servers, are configured in the way I want them to be configured. Uh, also, for, for, for kind of sort of tunneling things, uh, Sugar can, can also be used, and I will show the examples of DSL, how, how this can be achieved. So that's a, that's a common thing where you're in, in, in enterprises and that you have a, uh, some, some sort of jump server which is accessible, and in order to access a server inside the D, uh, secure network, you have to do the tunnel or SSH tunnel, and then uh, within, the, within the tunnel connect to that server. And that's possible with Sugar as well. Uh, another thing I use Sugar for is kind of bridging the, the development and production environments, uh, which were isolated. But like, uh, uh, for example, if you have a company that develops the software and there's a company that supports software in production, they use different infrastructure. So in order to you know, transfer data and verify that uh, components and deliverables are transferred correctly between dev and prod, uh, there should be some glue code. And we, we, it could be some tunneling again involved and some, some additional firewall settings. Uh, but then you overcome. I used sugar scripts to do that uh, for, for a couple of cases. Uh, another thing is that I'm using Sugar for quite often is that uh, I am quite a lot into uh, using Raspberry Pis for, for, my, for my home projects and for my uh, community projects. So I have, of course, I have to provision them somehow. I have to verify that, some, that uh, they have the proper software and uh, have to upload the scripts from time to time and then grab the logs uh, back. So basically, I do it with with, with Sugar scripts again, uh, and uh, usually, you know the those devices pop up on, on, on some network and have to find which IP address is that. And sometimes it's a different IP address depending on what kind of network it is. So I'm scanning the network, finding the, my, my, my devices based on the, what, what kind of port they re respond to, uh, and uh, then do my provisioning uh, kind of automatically. Uh, so this is another use case I'm using Sugar for. But of course, behind the scenes, it's obviously it's SSH and SSP, SSCP protocols that, that are being used. Okay, let me show you some, some, some examples. So in order to use Sugar, you, you can actually use it directly from, from a Groovy script. And uh, the, the, the way you can you know, import any library into, into your custom Groovy script is by using grab. Uh, so in order to get uh, Sugar into, in, in, into your Groovy script, you, you can define a dependency, and grab will automatically fetch it uh, in, in, into, in, into the local cache, and will we'll make it available to your class path of your script. And you need to import that class, the import static uh, default SSH class with all, all the methods. That basically is the entry point into Sugar DSL. And that, that static import gives you access to, to uh, common configuration, like configuring the default user, configuring the default key file, configure different options, uh, login options for, for exec commands, for CP commands. Uh, and uh, you can override them later on in specific uh, invocations of uh, exec and SCP, uh, but uh, defaults can be defined uh, in, in, the, in this way. Uh, in order to make a connection, in order to say that I want to connect to a remote uh, server, you have to use this remote uh, session method in, and, uh, in, inside, and that, to which you provide a closure. And, and, and inside that closure, inside a code block, you basically execute the, the commands, you copy the, the files and everything. So the, 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 the one thing that is, that, is, is, that is required is the URL, and you can also specify it as an additional parameter to the remote session. And after that, you have an ability to execute uh, commands against that remote machine. So quite easy. Uh, also, Sugar gives some, some, some additional abstractions, like for example, in this case, it gives an abstraction of remote file, which basically works quite similar to a normal file, just uh, and you have uh, uh, common things like text and uh, uh, also appendable, I will show it in a moment, uh, where you can just uh, uh, stream the data to the file, you can uh, assign the full contents of the file to, to, to just a property, and that's just all, that's, that's, this is the groovy style of doing things, and, and, and it works with the remote files in that way. Uh, uh, also, you can, of course, because it's groovy, you can assign full multi-line 
uh, strings to, to, the, to the file. So if you really want to just set that this file should be that, look like that, you can fully uh, embed it into, into Groovy script. Uh, also, uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, remote file as an abstraction supports uh, appendable interface. So we can do normal Groovy stuff as you, as, as, you, as, you probably, as you probably know. You can do some, something similar with uh, Groovy files and uh, in, 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 in input streams. Basically, any, anything that uh, in Groovy implements appendable interface has an ability to do this left shift operators and kind of uh, stream data in, 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 into the object. This is also the, what remote, files, uh, remote file implements, and you can kind of make the, 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 the DSL look quite, quite treatable in that sense, so you just stream data instead of doing some, some more complex stuff. Uh, also, uh, Apart from remote file abstraction, you can actually use uh, uh, SCP as, as, as an as a, as a SCP DSL as a, as a way to copy files, and uh, I hope it's quite obvious what it does. So we take the SCP as the main uh, closure, uh, and then inside that you can specify any number of from and into uh, blocks, and then inside that you can specify uh, any number of local directories of, of, of local files and remote files. And of course, if you switch the local and remote in the from and into, that, then direction based basically be the other way around. So it's very easy to copy files as well in a declarative way. Come on, yes. So yeah, this is the way to specify, for example, if, if I want to copy two files into one directory, that's, this is the way I do that. Uh, and of course you can implement something that is more, more complex uh, uh, if you, need, if, you, if you need some some kind of looping, uh, all, all, all normal uh, Groovy code can go in, into the session, into the closure inside remote sessions. You can combine it with other libraries. You can combine it with uh, all, all, all power of Groovy and uh, do some some logic inside there. Uh, there is a special use case uh, sometimes with the, with the, when you copy files into into remote machine over SSH over SCP, then it, it could be that the user that you're using to actually copy. The files doesn't have access uh, doesn't have access to to the directory where you're copying to. But if you do sudo, then you actually have access to that directory. So in, in and uh, the thing is that SSH protocol has two different like three different channels to to to, to do data to do command execution. It has exec channel, SCP channel, and it has also shell channel. Uh, so if you use SCP channel and that's what the SCP command is using, then you actually cannot do sudo even 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 if you have it. So you have to emulate that. So you have to copy files to some other directory, for example TMP, and then do post upload command that will do copying. Again. That with, with the sudo to, to the correct place. This is quite 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 common situation when you have a user that is not root, uh, and uh, the, the user has sudo, and the CP is not really able to copy it where you have where you want it to. So you have to use this trick to, to, to do. Also, you can of course you can override that with some other command if you need, like and, and adding permissions or adding something. So you, you can also do that. Uh, and because because it's uh, it's actually inside a programming uh, uh, fully fully pro full programming language environment, we can actually do uh, all all the ifs, all all all, 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 all the all the abstractions that, that we need. And uh, for example, exact command, uh, it, it first of all can, can it can it, it can take uh, some 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 other parameters uh, except the command. Like for example, it can take a fail fail or an error. To, we can set it to false, which so doesn't fail with exception if we if the command fails because by default it will fail. Uh, and you can also hide the output, and then you can get the result object of that execution. And uh, the result object will contain the exit status, will contain the, the output uh, of the of the remote command, and then you can in, you can do inside your local script, you can do processing of that. So you can do some logic, executing more commands. You can uh, throw throw some exceptions that are based on the parsing of the of the output of the remote command. So, but it's all happening locally, obviously. And there are some shortcuts uh, uh, for uh, for you know for making this kind of common things. So if, if there is a OK uh, short, uh, method. It just takes a command. If command it returns status zero, then it means that OK returns true, uh, and then we can do some logic inside the script. The same is with fail. The same with uh, com common output just returns you the output without failing the command. So it's a shortcut. Uh, yeah, that's that's the tunnel. That's how you would do the tunneling. So. Basically, if you need to do, if you if you have the, if your jump host is with has an IP of one two three four, uh, and you want to uh, connect through that tunnel through the, through the jump host to another server, uh, uh, so, sorry, if, if the server you want to connect to has uh, one two three four, but you have a tunnel, uh, you, but you, you can actually you're SSHing to the jump host, uh, then you have to then you can do like that. 
Uh, and then uh, it will, uh, what, what, how, how a sage tunneling works is basically it starts a local uh, uh, socket server uh, within the same process and, and under the random port. And the random port will be given as a parameter to the closure. Uh, and basically, uh, it will, you, you can connect over that local port to the local host, and it will be the server running on IP 1234 and port 8080. So you go to the, to, through, through SSH channel to, to, uh, to the remote uh, server, which probably directly is not connectable uh, through, 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 through HTTP protocol, and you can then do some stuff on top of that. So you know, in this case, it's kind of simple implementation of flushing the cache over the firewall. Uh, which is actually good. It's, it's a real use case, by the way. Uh, another thing you can do with, uh, with uh, 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 ex command execution, that you, you, you can actually add uh, some prefixes to, 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 to the commands or, and some suffixes. And the common use case is definitely sudo, and the suffix is, is definitely the, the opening it to, to some, 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 uh, some common file. And of course, you, 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 you you can you can think of some some, some others, but uh, this is the usual thing uh, you do with with prefix and suffix, if you want to, if you don't want to repeat some stuff. Um, okay, some more features. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah. So uh, another thing that Sugar supports actually it shows uh, it, it cor cor correctly works with with ANSI coloring. So if, if your remote command actually is outputting uh, ANSI colors, it will show them on the screen. Uh, in this case, you probably don't see the dark blue, but it's, it is dark blue there, and uh, dark blue mixed with uh, with uh, white. And for example, you can even do th things like that. So this is uh, like a very simple example. Uh, we execute bash command, which will show us uh, rainbow colors. With the, the, uh, and uh, sugar actually will, tri will uh, trigger that correctly uh, and show you, the, it will show the, uh, show the output correctly on, on, on the local host. Okay, let me try to demonstrate that. So we have, this is the rainbow demo. So as you see, this is a normal uh, sugar script. We import the, uh, the library. We set our trust unknown hosts. Then we connect to the remote machine, which actually is local. It's just VM running locally on me. And then I'm executing some, some code that actually produces on the output. So I can do groovy, rainbow groovy. Let's see, should connect, connecting. Yes, so we have the rainbow. It works. Uh, also, another thing that Sugar provides when you do SCP, uh, when you, where you do a re re remote file thingy, uh, actually it shows you the progress of how, how fast it is. What is the download progress? So you can see, you, you can actually see that. Uh, another thing, another kind of actually quite weird feature that, that, that was re requested by one of, our, one of my customers is that uh, actually, I didn't know that, but it actually it is possible to uh, do SSH over HTTP proxy. And uh, if you really need that, you can specify that. And that they needed it for some, some auditing uh, uh, needs, uh, requirements, and it, it works for them, but I never, never really used that. So it's kind of beats, beats the purpose of SSH, you know, to do proxy over, over HTTP, but, but, it, but it works. And, it, and that's it's part of the base library that we use to, to, to implement Sugar, and on top of which we implement Sugar. Uh, another thing that Sugar provides uh, is uh, Sugar executable, uh, which you can basically provide a uh, sugar script to, and then you don't need to uh, run, you don't need to uh, uh, specify all the connectivity details inside, you don't need to specify, do, do you, to, you do not need to import the, the library, just have a plain, plain, plain script, uh, which, which, is, which could be quite handy because you don't need to, well, if you install sugar executable, then you don't need to install Groovy because it's part of, of the deliverable. You don't need to write this graph, you don't need to write the connection details. So scripts become more portable, and it kind of gives you similar to Ansible experience. Uh, so yeah, you can this, this, the Sugar script will look very much the same as as a Groovy script that using Sugar, but without all all all, all the all the uh, all the additional details. Uh, so uh, the way you can install Sugar uh, executable actually is SDK man. Do you guys know SDK man? Yes. So it's it's uh, yeah it's the best tool to get Groovy Gradle 
uh, also Java now, uh, and uh, also Sugar is part, part of the, the part, part of the distribution. So uh, yeah, in order to get SDK man, I guess you know that you just get it from 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 uh, get SDK man IO, get it to Bash, and in order to install Sugar, you can you can you can go and install things like that. Okay, let me try to demo that. I I, I am in here. Maybe I can use this one better. So uh, I can just go and try to install it. Okay, I downloaded that before, so it's it's already there. Uh, if I run sugar now, it will say that I need some some default file, so it expects a script actually to 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 be to be to be there, and we can basically uh, specify uh, this. Oh, something is. Ah, crap. I will do CD vagrant. Uh, and I will do nano. Okay, let me let me quickly do that. Okay. So it's gonna be user Ubuntu. And it's going to be color, and it's going to be sugar. So this should work if, if the IP address is correct. Of course, I thought. OK, but you have to trust me, it works. In the, in, in the same fashion. Okay. So uh, another good thing about Sugar is that uh, it actually supports. Uh, there is a DSL Sugar DSL support inside IntelliJ, and the thing is that uh, it, well, it's not IntelliJ that did that. It actually, I, I did the support. But uh, if you have any any Groovy DSL that you have created yourself or using, you can actually also add support. To IntelliJ uh, for for your DSL, so it makes more uh, it's, it's easier to 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 work with that. And the magic behind that is quite simple. So first of all, you have to if you have like sugar scripts uh, as a separate extension, you can uh, add them as, as Groovy files into IntelliJ. It's going to work. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, the reason it works is that uh, in inside IntelliJ, you can actually define. Uh, uh, you can define a so-called GDSL, like Groovy DSL descriptor, which defines uh, what kind of uh, uh, different file types, uh, w w what should we apply as, 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 as a, uh, what, what things we should import into, into the visibility of the script when it is being loaded. And in this case, as you see, I'm just in, in the GDSL. I'm saying that I want to uh, default SSH be available as a base class of the of, of the of, of all the sugar scripts and also I'm, I'm basically importing all, all, all the methods of, of session delegate which is the base class inside the remote session method uh, which, which, which is being used and if I if I show you the default, the default sugar script actually uh, the, the latest uh, IntelliJ version uh, it, it's even showing the parameter names here uh, but if I for example do SCP. It shows me all all, all 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 the options for how to write SCP closure. So we have we have it here, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be from. Yeah, it's it's showing pretty much uh, uh, all, all the things I can do here. And uh, let's say here I have local D or local file, local D. So so all, all, all uh, it's basically coming from 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 API itself. We can we can use it uh, easily. Uh, okay. It should be uh, on 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 the class path. Basically, when uh, IntelliJ sees that uh, the file is on the class path, it's it's using that. And and, and in, in my case, it's basically it's on the class path of the project. But when, but the, whenever you have sugar jar available in your class path, the IntelliJ scans through all the jars basically, and if, if if it finds the files, then it will do the mapping. The only thing you have to do manually is to map the sugar extension to to that to to Groovy, and then, then that's it. That's going to work. And then and this can work for for any uh, DSL that you have. So. Last path, uh, IntelliJ will see that, will detect that. And it's, it's, it is part of uh, sugar jar if you, if you have it on the glass path. 
So if you have another project which uses sugar, you will actually get that automatically. And you can read more from, from, from uh, for, for how to write this uh, uh, IntelliJ DSL support uh, files on, on this website, on this uh, link. Uh, it's a quite, quite, quite cool thing. Uh, another thing we, I have uh, in, in, in Sugar is something that we needed to actually implement to actually test the uh, to write unit tests for Sugar. So we created a SSHD mock uh, and we created tests for that. So I can try to show, yeah. Uh, basically, uh, in order to, you know, to define some, some command expectations from, from uh, SSH server, from mock SSH server, we can define this kind of closures command and we specify just a regular expression what kind of commands should match. And all, 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 all the rest to do some, some, some provide some. We just, for each LS command that, is, that this mock server is getting, we are outputting some data to that. And we can write uh, integration tests against SSH, uh, for SSH things. And uh, the same thing is, is with who am I and do, do you, so we, we do some default help. So this is the way we test Sugar uh, internally. Uh, and you, you can also use that. Also, Sugar, this SSHD mock can provide a file expectation. So if we do SCP or uh, the download files, uh, we actually, it will uh, show, tell us that this file actually exists in, in, in the remote SSH server, so it's a kind of handy thing. And then on to start, and then the port number we want to use for, for that, and then, then, then you can actually connect using the SSH client to that. Okay, let me try to show you the demo. Uh, okay. So, where am I? I'm here. No, I should be here. Mock uh, starts the mock, and I can just uh, see it. When the main thread stops, then, 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 then this script will exit. Uh, so I'm just doing starting groovy mock groovy. Okay, it started, and now I can use just SSH command in this case, and that will connect to that. On, on this port that I used, and we'll execute some. I should get some output. Hopefully, yeah, I did. So it looks like actually it responded to actual command, even though it was a mock. So if you really need a mock uh, for, for SSHD mock for some, for some reason, you can you can try to use the this mock server uh, for for your purposes. Uh, okay. Uh, another thing that uh, that Sugar kind of uh, is, is a side product of Sugar is called PUnit. Basically, it's just a GUnit extension that 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 adds a GUnit test case uh, that adds all the Sugar functionality in, 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 into that GUnit test case. Uh, this is base class that, uh, for, for GUnit test cases, where you can just uh, you know use for your integration tests or verification tests for for testing your infrastructure. And uh, this is a simple, you know, uh, test for testing that Derby is running there. And uh, there's some commands that we do do something before uh, uh, running the test, which in this case will actually was running pub, uh, apply on, on the server. And, and then we can verify that the, we have this this command returns something that we t the t this file contains some text and uh, basically verify the state of the server. So it's kind of uh, specification for infrastructure. So do things like that, uh, like runs something is open, we can pretty much execute any command. Uh, we, and uh, in addition to, to, to uh, what Sugar provides, we also have some, some, some other commands that the unit defines itself. Uh, okay, and we can also receive, for example, to test verify that, uh, in this particular case I was using to verify that uh, SVM repository is created on a remote machine after we run uh, certain provisioning scripts, and the, uh, the SVM server was behind the, the, the firewall, so we needed a tunnel. Basically, that's what was part of, you know, uh, the unit verification, which was running after in, in, in this way as well. And it was very, yeah, we are inside Groovy and Java. We have, we can use all the libraries that are available to, to Groovy and Java. So in this case, we harder to use if we use Bash, for example, just, just Bash. Uh, yeah, that's just a huge example. Yes. And of course, 
usually, yeah, especially in the, in, 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 in the first projects, we, we integrated uh, with, with Puppet, with Gradle, with Sugar and Jenkins, all, all of these components were working together for, uh, for provisioning, for deployment tasks, for verification tasks, for uh, different maintenance tasks. We, all of that was autom automated together as, 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 one, as, as, as a set of uh, as, as a continuous delivery pipeline and as a set of tools that were helping to maintain the system as well. Uh, and uh, for example, this p-unit tests, uh, because they were just you know just t-unit based uh, framework, we could get reports, and we obviously can publish that into Jenkins, so we could see uh, verification that certain types of provisioning code actually work correctly. And I'm, I'm, I mentioned TAP already. Uh, this is how TAP basically looks like. So, I'll, I'll, so just a simple uh, scripts to provide TAP, pro TAP protocol-based output. And this is how, how TAP looks like. So we basically get a number of tests. And then for each line, we get either OK or not OK. And in, in more complex cases, actually, you can make TAP like nested ones. It's also possible. And then the uh, uh, land reporting plugins will understand that. Uh, and this is for a simple test, to, uh, a simple code for actually running tap with sugar. So let's say we have a set of commands we want to test, and uh, then we can, you know, go through these commands with uh, and verify that if, if 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 command is executed, then we print OK. If command is failing, then we print not OK. And this this is basically the tap output. And we want to get the number of tests, and then in the end we also print uh, the the, uh, the result. So this is how easily you, you can actually do that with with sugar. Uh, and I can show you a quick demo. Let me check if I have it. Yeah, this is tab.groovy. So this is this the script I showed you on the, on the slides, basically. And if I do now groovy, tab.groovy, we'll connect and will give me a simple tab output. Something that I, I could probably save to, 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 to another location and uh, feed it to the, to the, to the reporting uh, plugin. And uh, obviously Jenkins has already something for, for TAP. So it, it looks very similar to, to JUnit. Just you know, give, give, give me the file, I'll show you the, 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 the chart. And that, that, that works perfectly. Uh, also, uh, Sugar integrates with the Gradle. Gradle, which basically gives uh, a sugar DSL available inside Gradle scripts. Uh, and in order to get that, uh, you basically just... Sugar doesn't support yet the, the new mechanism with plugin ID. Uh, this is inside Gradle scripts. Uh, and then pretty much you can write your tasks, uh, your Gradle tasks, in the same way you do. Uh, into uh, into uh, into the task, and then you can of course get the the properties from from from, from can, can, can you connectivity properties from from either the the, the main uh, the uh, the default settings for for Gradle or from somewhere else. So yeah, the, 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 this is a way to configure, for example, default uh, user and default password. If let's say you connect to the same type of infrastructure and they don't, and then they reuse the same username and password for for, for all the servers, then it's easy to configure it on on, on, the, on the top level of Gradle script. Uh, uh, but you can also, uh, in, in this particular case, you see it's use, actually using a, a project property, and as you probably know, you can actually uh, move any project property to the Gradle properties. And uh, for example, in your project's home, you can create uh, a dummy file with the, where uh, the, the, the values for the properties will contain dummy values. Uh, and uh, then uh, you can override those uh, inside your user's home directory. Uh, directory, Gradle properties. And there you, you can store actual, the actual credentials. So in this case, you can still commit uh, Gradle properties inside the project home, and it will stay secure because it doesn't contain any passwords, and it will still make the Gradle build compile. And then, for uh, for, for 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 your own credentials or for secret pr things, you will use. Uh, this is the way I usually set up security for. Uh, for Okay, uh, also another thing that Sugar has uh, is a little brother, which probably needs a bit more attention. Uh, it's called uh, Groovin, uh, and it's basically a WinRAM implementation 
uh, when we run for Eggle implementation for, uh, for connecting to Windows machines with, which, which are running on that. Uh, and uh, it's kind of similar to, to, uh, to, to Sugar in what it does. So it has this remote uh, management method in, instead of remote session method compared to, to Sugar. And you basically specify like host username, password, and then you have a similar uh, approach with exec and remote file. Uh, uh, I think I'm finishing earlier than, than, than expected, but uh, I guess you guys are not against that because it's the last session and probably everybody wants to go home anyway. Uh, so uh, yeah, so Sugar is, it's bottle tested Groovy DSL for session TV, it's actually used by, by several companies and uh, um, amateurs. Uh, it's executable and portable scripting tool, so you can actually run it uh, inside the Groovy script. You can run it as a separate executable, and you can easily integrate it with any Java and Groovy library, and also you can integrate it in the integrable. Uh, so as I mentioned, there are many use cases that you can use it for, but pretty much every SSH use case fits Sugar as well. Uh, and there are some, some features that I'm planning to implement uh, in, in, in the future. And if you guys uh, want to help, I would be, would be very happy. Uh, so seeking contributors, uh, source code is obviously available. Uh, it's open source library and it's published. It uh, could be downloaded from Maven Central. Uh, SSH DMOC is also uh, available in RAM client, PUnit, also some other things that can, can be useful in this context. I will, I will share the slides, so it's... Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah, but uh, I showed it here, actually. We just put the, 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 the secret properties outside. And, and uh, ideally, uh, well, uh, instead of using passwords, you can actually use keys. And, and then you just refer to the location on, 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 on the directory where, where the key is. And that, this is, of course, much more secure than, uh, than password, of course. OK. Any other questions? I guess then it's time to go home. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Um, I just came in here to say goodbye to the people left. Uh, thank you for coming to Great.